This one and Vine, they gotta be in my back pocket. We talk before work, after work, doing work. Um, I don't know, we're like best friends. We're chasing dreams, creating legacies. So I put the new band on there, remember? Yeah. And then the comb in the back. You know the salon days when you go to your your appointment is at eight o'clock, but you don't get seen until eight p.m. Yeah, but that yeah, that's not a problem. Either. You're literally in and out. No one is waiting more than fifteen minutes. Welcome back to the Boss Ladies Podcast. I'm your host Hope, and as usual, I have some amazing women today in the studio from Sassy Sisters Boutique. I have Miss Ebony and Miss Jasmine. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Y'all are going to find out all the other background stuff because we have a rattler and a wildcat yes. in the what? house. <laughs> we see you love. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, ladies. How are you today? I am well. I'm blessed. Yeah. I can't complain. Can't complain. Yeah. Same here. I'm feeling lovely today. And you're looking great. Thank you. I'm Thank loving you. your hair, which is why you're here. Sassy yes. Sisters Boutique. <laughs> and let me correct Sassy Sisters okay. Boutique, not Sassy Sisters. Sisters. Yes, yes. Sisters. Correct me. Sisters. Like, sisters. <laughs> Make sure y'all get that right. So when you look them up on Instagram, it's S-I-S-T-A-S, -S, not yes. E-R-S. Because yes. it's actually a Sassy Sisters oh. um, by another form oh, of women and okay. we are the sisters that's right mm -hmm. we are the sisters yes well so let's start with ebony where did you go to school i mean i give fam you right mm -hmm. girl so i went to the prestigious florida agriculture and mechanical university okay yes and i loved my time there it was the, one of the best decisions i've ever made awesome so what did you study at fam so I studied business marketing. Okay. And then um, so I started my human resources degree in ma with my master's. Okay. But then transitioned over online to Toro University. What's the name of that one? Toro. Toro. Okay. Yep. And Miss Jasmine, where did you attend and what is your degree in? Uh, the prestigious Bethune-Cookman University. Yeah. So I graduated with a uh, business administration degree with a concentration in marketing. So that was my undergrad. And then my master's was at Toro University. Ebony copied me. Um, <laughs> Lies. So, <laughs> Lies. <laughs> we both have the same uh, MBA. So I did graduate with a master's of business administration with a concentration in human resource management. So it sounds like the two of you knew before you even went to college what you were going to do when you were done nope no nope. nope. mm -mm. believe it or not mm -hmm. jasmine and i we didn't even know each other's major we just knew we were in a school of business when okay. she was at bethune mm -hmm. i was at fam we didn't even know we both were majoring in or um concentrating in marketing and then also, even with human resources, we didn't know each other. Even though she started a semester before me at Toro, I didn't know she was going for human resources. We had different ideas in mind. Really? Mm -hmm. But you end up doing the same, same thing. thing. We did. So you are you are still connected as sisters. Yes. yes. It we was are down, sisters. You are sisters. sisters. Yes. Yes. So tell me, yes. um, Jasmine, what did you learn from the great Bethune-Cookman that helps you in the business today? Oh, I learned so much at Bethune-Cookman. Um, I would say one of the uh, things that I learned at Bethune-Cookman is uh, etiquette, believe it or mm -hmm. not. So at the great school of business, <laughs> um, we learned how to dress, um, how to present ourselves to the business world. Uh, we learned how to uh, do proper interviews. We also learned how to uh, create like business plans, marketing plans. Um, there's so much that we learned at Bethune Cookman, but I would say that's just the start of it was mainly the etiquette, which so many students, they don't learn that in right. school. They don't know how to, uh, sit at a dinner table. You know, what, what is that etiquette? What does it look like? You know, how do you eat? You know, where do you take your, open your sugar packets and where do you put the packet when you're finished? Some people, you know, at different schools, they don't get that. 
So I learned all those great, intricate things at Bethune-Cookman. And that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. When hearing you talk about that, my husband is a graduate, and he was in business as well. And mm -hmm. he, he used to tell me all the time they had to do the same thing. Sure did. So I love that years later they're still sharing and teaching the students what they need to they, know before they go out in there. Yes, they are. Yeah, so what did you learn, Miss Ebony, at FAMU that helps you in your work today? Well, honestly, just to kind of piggyback, mostly HBCUs have that professional development and etiquette. Okay. Um, something similar that definitely stood out, too, was the professional development. Um, and then one of the things that one of my professors always told me, never let someone um, mess up your name or forget your name mm, when I you like leave that. a room. So, especially in business. And that was something that always stood out to me. So, if anybody that know me know I'm going to correct you when you either spell my name or you say my name um, because it leaves an impression, you know. Definitely. And so um, also building confidence when you're in a room um, and just being able to speak. I know sometimes when you stop, you say um or whatnot when you get a little nervous, right. but learning how to pause and actually articulate yourself. Mm -hmm. So just different things that I think – um, a lot of HBCUs hone in on because, you know, most of us are black and brown people. Mm -hmm. And so we have to stand out, you know, back. That's what they were taught. And so that's what they teach and continue. So awesome. I love this. I didn't go to an HBCU, but I love the culture of HBCUs mm -hmm. because everyone I talk to being married to one you all have this um, connection with your school because of what it gave you. Yes. And, now, and you're using that it in true. the world today. So tell me, how did you all get to Sassy Sisters Boutique? How did we get there from a business management, <laughs> HR? I mean, how did we get to hair? <laughs> so this started years and years, like, years ago. ago. Okay. Um, I mean, my mom, it started with my mom. She's in the hair industry, what well, was. She retired, um, but she had her own hair salon. Mm -hmm. And so we've always been around hair. Mm -hmm. And we started, what, 12 and 13 years of age? Young, very um, young. Starting doing hair mm -hmm. braids and everything like that. So we always did it. It was always like a hobby or side hustle um, growing up mm -hmm. throughout high school, college, and then – Jasmine here had an amazing idea in 2013. So I did, actually. <laughs> so I wanted to create a, um, a store, actually. It was a female store. I wanted to sell clothing. That was like during the phase of when Instagram was popping. Mm, so yeah. everyone had a boutique. You know, everyone had some sort of LLC, Styles by B Boutique, and, and this, that, and the third. So I decided to create a boutique. And um, I feel like I wasn't, wasn't going anywhere with it. I feel like I was kind of stagnant. Okay. So, of course, I reached out to my sister girl here. That's, that's what we call each other. Sister I love girl. this. Sister yeah. girl. So, that's where the name comes from, sisters, because we call each other sisters. Yeah. No, but, no, no, Jazz. Jazz is the, the visionary behind Sassy Sisters. Uh -huh. But initially, the boutique she started with her friend Taylor was it named was, Jazzy Bells or something oh, like that, yeah. right? It was called um, Jezebel's Jazzy. Amour. Yeah. Sounds so Frenchy. Yeah, I just wanted to do something different yeah. from this boutique. But <laughs> I, I started the boutique. I reached out to Ebony, and she kind of just took it from there. So she was like, okay, well, this is what we're going to do. And this is Ebony to And that's day. my thing. Yes. Yes. She was like, this is what we're going to do. So we're going to start here. We're going to create a budget for ourselves. We're going to um, order this many things. We're going to have a photo shoot. It, it just started there. So fast forward. We both graduated with our MBA, and during that process, we were still doing hair. We were still selling clothes online, um, and, you know, the, the hair industry kind of, it took over. It still continued to just be pro prosperous for us, so we decided to, um, you know, move forward with the wigs because that's what everyone wanted was the wigs. Mm -hmm. And we but to, we, that's because they used to always ask us who did our hair because mm -hmm. we started making our own wigs in we college. Oh, okay, because I was we just did. about to say who was they. So in college it started. Yes, okay. in college. Yeah, and the wigs. The, our customers, people around us, they would ask, oh, who did, who did your hair? Oh, can you make me a wig? Can you make me a wig? And so then we started making wigs in our house. And then lo and behold. I mean, we still continue to do hair even yep. throughout like our master's and 
That's what the the market was at that time. It was wigs. So what you just said while you were doing your masters, that seems like a lot. So you're running a boutique, you're you're starting your wig shop and you're going to school. Tell these women, how did you do that? That seems like quite a bit on your plate. Faith and I would God. definitely say God. I always start God. off with God Amen. because without God, where would we be? Mm-hmm. But um, relying on each other, I, that's why I said me and my sister make a great team mm-hmm. um, because we both were so busy, you know, with school and we both work full time, nine to five corporate America jobs. So it was a lot to have to come home and do hair. So but we relied on each other. We made it work. Mm-hmm. And that's the big thing about relationship and team building and having someone that's like minded right. um, mm-hmm. that can understand your schedule. We we just, you know, and then of course, we're sisters. So mm-hmm. it, God knew what he and was it doing. Was, it was pretty easy because like I know if I started something Ebony knew she would finish it and vice versa yep so well we would work together it was very easy it was it was actually pretty easy I mean it just Ebony had started back then we made wigs by hand yes wow we came a long way yeah yes. I would never do that again <laughs> no, 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 yes, do. <laughs> I would never do that again so if I would make the wig she would style the wig um, and you know, we would get it ready for the customers. The customers would come and pick it up. We would ship out the wig out the house. And like I said, it became a time where it was just so, oh my God, it was so much hair in the yes. house. And we had carpet it, at the time. We sure did. It was, <laughs> oh, you had a shedding dog in there. <laughs> it was the work life balance was kind of hard only because like, we're really clean, mm. you know, we're like neat freaks. Mm. Mm-hmm. And we had carpet and we kept having to clean the car, you know, clean the hair at the carpet. Mm. And it was just, it was just getting overwhelming because we had like, we had mannequin heads all over the place. Yes. Like our niece and nephew used to come in and it was like, auntie, can y'all turn them around? <laughs> it was scaring it them. Was scaring <laughs> them <at night>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, you know, it, that that's a whole other story. But, yeah, we definitely had to transition and, and eventually get the storefront. So yeah. This is beautiful because I want to go back just a little bit as mm-hmm. both of you were talking. You compliment each other so well, and mm-hmm. you said it's easy as my sister. But there are a lot of us who don't have this. Mm-hmm. So where did this bond come from, and how do you use it in business? So the bond started from my mother, actually. Mm -hmm. So when we were like little kids, we never could say we hate each other. Um, If we would get in fights or arguments, she would make us like kiss each other and And hug hug and say, I love you. (laughs) Um, We always did things together. So we played together. We we stuck up for one another. Um, No one was trying my sister and my brother. Literally Um, at all. Everybody knows that. You know, we were close. It was just like a natural thing. But I think it it stemmed from my mother. Because I think if it wasn't in her, Mm. if she didn't set the tone for us, we would probably be different. Shout out, mom. Yes, yes, mom. Mama. And it's, oh wait, I don't know. her so name? Sorry. Her name is Tiffany. Shout yeah, out to Tiffany. Mama Tiffany. Mm-hmm. And that's beautiful because Mama we don't see that a lot anymore. Women are always seeming to be fighting against each other, mm-hmm. even in family. So yes. I just wanted to highlight the way the two of you compliment each other. So tell me or tell us what, when you talk about wigs, you said you used to make them. Let's get into that start with I don't know anything about wigs so share with me what you actually do yes so right now today the wig shop is all in one you can literally walk in not knowing anything about a wig and we're going to educate you first and foremost so have a wig consultation and then understand your needs your wants because some people suffer from hair loss so they may not want a heavy wig some people just want it for a cosmetic look you just a cosmetic wig you know something that stands out so we get an understanding of the client first to understand their needs okay. and then we go behind the scenes and that's where the magic works mm-hmm. you know so um, whether you want you have a smaller size head when I tell you it's very detailed mm-hmm. Because our wig shop is focused on this wig is specifically for you. It's 100% custom made. Custom. Love it. Yes. So like Jasmine said, we started off hand making the wig. So hand stitching and then we evolved to the sewing machine. And then we went a step further by getting our um, wigs manufactured. Okay. So we tell them what we want, what we need, the, the size, density, the shape, everything. What cap, everything. Yes. The specifics. We can even get, you know, detailed as far as like the color. The highlights, um, the band, 
everything everything the placement of your combs because some women don't like combs some Mm. do some want to band some don't want to band so it's literally the details because when you order just a wig online it's not the same and every woman that walks into Sassy Sisters Boutique, mm-hmm. they always say, this is different. Oh or this wig this fits before. me. Like, it fits me so well. How do you get it that way? So it's just the the focus of customization, making sure our customers are priority mm-hmm. and meeting their needs. And that's beautiful what you said. I've never seen this before. That's what I said when I came in. I, I've never heard of a customized hair boutique. So do you, are you cosmetologists? No. no. So, well, I have my facial specialist um, license. Mm-hmm. So it's under cosmetology. Okay. Yep. But do you do hair in the shop? At the boutique, are you perming hair? Are you coloring hair? Or do you just special? Because you taught me something when I came. And that's what I'm trying to pull out. Yeah. So um, wigs aren't considered cosmetology, believe it or not. So wigs are actually considered retail. Reason why is because we're not doing anything physically to someone's hair besides braiding, which braiding, of course, years ago um, in the state of Florida, you needed your uh, braiding license, which I carry for years. But now you're not required to have your braiding license. So you can actually braid someone ha- you know, hair, which is, I'm glad they make that, you know, yeah. change that because, you know, we, as, you know, young black girls, we braided each other All hair. The time. That was it. We, <laughs> That's what we do. We've been doing that for years. But however, um, no, we're not covered underneath cosmetology because we don't need our cosmetology license for it. Um, we do style the wigs. We can install the wigs, of course. Um, but as far as like coloring someone's natural hair or cutting their natural hair, no, we leave that to the professionals. Yeah. <laughs> like, to but the you, cosmetologists. Got you. So ladies, mm-hmm. did you hear that? You can come into Sassy Sisters Boutique and customize your own wig. Yes. yes. And Jasmine and Ebony will be there each step of the way. So when we were there, it was a, a lady came in. I don't remember. Is it Miss Johnson? Miss Joanne. Miss Joanne. And yes. she was smiling from ear to ear. Share with us a little bit of her story. Because um, you were telling me that some people come in, they drop something off, mm-hmm. get a new one. Like, share what that process looks like that you offer. Yes. Yeah, so, specifically for Miss Joanne, she um, she took advantage of the maintenance program that we have. That's the word, maintenance um, program. So, the maintenance program is when you come in, you have, you know, you've worn this wig, it's maybe dirty or need some help. Mm. And so, you can drop it off. We wash, deep wash, deep condition, and we restyle the wig. We tighten up any loose uh, webs or combs, add combs, add a new band. And that's so, in store? In store. We do it in store. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So you can do same day or you can do 24 to 48 hour drop off. Um, and so we just work with our customers, you know, to schedule a time for them to pick up. But it's it's a whole thing. You know, mm-hmm. it's part of the process because, again, we want people to come in or more so our customers to come in and feel like they can do we can do anything to their wig you know and honestly we really can yeah yeah we can can. some things we're limited on as far as like colors because we're not professional colorists um so it's only so much we can do with certain colors but um you know we've been very successful with meeting the needs of our customers and if we can't we don't mind collaborating and partnering with someone that can color because we have done that in the past okay Yep. So what would you say to someone, a young lady or whomever, that's trying to do what you do? Like, break that down for us. What were the steps you had to take? Again, I'm still trying to understand. I know you were always in hair. And a lot of times we go and we get these degrees and you do what looks like something completely different. But you're actually using your degree in what you do. So tell someone who may not be able to have a master's in business but they want to do what you do. What does that look like? What's, where do you start? Um, so first I would start with um, research. So research the market, research the idea of what you're interested in first. So don't just jump out there and do it, you know. Um, I, I'm a big fan of having faith. I am, and I'm all, I always will have faith. Amen. Um, but do your, but God, of course. Let me stop there, but God. Amen. Do your research. <laughs> Um, once you do your research, uh, get a, a, you know, start a great marketing plan, a great business plan and write down all of your ideas step by step. And I would say just follow those steps in general, because now thanks to AI, you can honestly just 
type online, you know, how to create a business time, a business plan, how to create a marketing plan and get your thoughts and ideas down specifically. And of course, get the legal things out the way. And then after that, um, I would say if you could find a great partner, that would be lovely. Mm, okay. A great partner that, you know, business minded, like minded, like you as well. Um, someone who understand the drive, someone who has the niche, um, and someone who's willing to sacrifice, because business is all about sacrifice. Don't we know it? Yes, it <laughs> yes, is. Especially it is. when working with another person. You know, when you're working by yourself, and, and might I add, if you need a business plan, I do business plans yes, for my other yes, business. Yes, my cheer girl. <laughs> so, and we actually have a whole ebook with all of this information, mm -hmm. detail. We'll put it in the description. Yes, it's very valuable um, to wanting from the beginning, even understanding wigs like the lace, uh, understanding the lace, what understanding type? different types of wigs. And so we have a lot in that ebook. But aside from that, you know, making sure that you also go into it with the right intentions. Because yes. if you're just going into it for the money, mm -hmm. you're going to fail. And I say that because... You know, we're all in business to make money, right. but that's not, that shouldn't be your motive of your determination that wake you up every morning. Mm -hmm. And I say that because you have to enjoy it. Have have exactly. We love yeah. what we do. And most people say that because we do other things outside of Sassy mm -hmm. Sisters. But one thing that I will always um, um, strive and tell my mentees, do it because you love it. And if that's not the primary focus, you're going to fail. Yeah. Now, somebody can tell me otherwise, but I'll listen. It's, I'll, you're going to sacrifice it. and struggle in some form or fashion if you're not enjoying what you do. I agree with that 100%, which is why we had to take a stance and say, you know, I can't do this for anybody else. We loved it. And when you're doing what you love for someone else it's their vision and yes. their brand and sometimes you have to take that step back and say I'm it's time for me to do my thing I want Absolutely. people to get to know me so walk-ins appointments only what does that look like for what you do at Sassy Sisters do you have to make an appointment can someone just walk in or both we take both yeah both. so we make sure that you know we give options um meet the needs of our customers because we noticed in the beginning too a lot of people when we were just out of our house you had to make an appointment mm -hmm. but now that we have a storefront brick and mortar you know you can walk in so we have particular hours just for walk-ins okay um but some of our women do again suffer from hair loss and may not be comfortable you know showing what they may not have have right. um and so we want to make sure that they have the opportunity to schedule an appointment and it's specifically for them before we open or after we open i mean close so we want to give that option for comfort too i love when women stick together because we all have our little issues and sometimes we're insecure yes. but thank you for letting them know that hey if you're insecure they will see you individually right Absolutely. you can make an appointment mm -hmm. um when we were meeting before you shared something about the COVID time and how you survived Ooh, when most businesses dun, dun, dun. just crushed <laughs> once again so, but god <laughs> So share share that journey, and we know God was in it, and we know you had to use what you learned as well. Share with everyone, how did you make it through? And I know it has a lot to do with who you are as individuals. So how did you make it through the COVID crisis? So through COVID, um, as everyone know, you know, you had to shut down your business. Mm -hmm. If you were not essential. Yes, and we were not essential. <laughs> <laughs> Although a lot of our clients still thought that way, of course. Mm -hmm. So um, we, quote, unquote, did not shut down our business 100%. And I'll, I blame that on our loyal clients. Okay. Uh, it pays to have rapport with people. Exactly. And to really uh, treat people well. Because during that time, we technically were supposed to not be doing business. But we had uh, customers just reaching out to us. And they was like, well, um, y'all said y'all open? Y'all said open? And we'll be like, yeah, we open. Wait, wait, wait. So let's, let's clarify. Because I'm a... Um Paper trail person. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> per the government orders, we were not open. The sign was not open. The sign was However, open. we did go to our location and we worked on wigs. And women would come and they would uh, 
pick up through the door. Yeah, they they would would, call first. Yes, they would call first. And they would say, hey, are you guys open? Mm -hmm. And we would say no, but you can (laughs) pick up. You can pick it up. (laughs) Pick it up. You can drop off your Yes, so we did have pick up and drop off (laughs) options. Yes. We were not open through regular hours. No. Let's clarify. Let's clarify that. Just but we, case. that <laughs> honestly really helped us out. It really sustained our business, those loyal clients. Mm-hmm. And to piggyback on something that Ebony said, we work with a lot of clients for like alopecia and thyroid issues and cancer. And a lot of them, you know, they, they don't do their hair. So we actually do their hair for them, which their hair is their wigs. Love so that. during that time, a lot of our clients, they were essential workers. So they were nurses and doctors and, and um, you know, people that worked in the restaurant mm-hmm. industry. And people don't understand that restaurant industry was an essential worker. How Definitely do you think these folks are supposed to eat? Yeah. So we do those wigs for, for those women. Yep. So they were coming. They still needed to get their hair done. So, you know, we just... You know, pick up and drop off. Pick off. You know, um, we just did what we had to do. But I also think, too, that was like the rebirth. I say the rebirth of okay. digital marketing, mm-hmm. um, which I think was very important for us, too. We still market it. We sure you did. know, and the thing is, it it did take a toll on us financially because we weren't making as much money Ooh. as we were previously. Um, and we had to, you know, pivot. improvise mm-hmm. and pivot and, you know, work with what we had. Um, but we also... Also, too, caught COVID that year. Um, so um, that's another story. Yeah, but crazy. we caught COVID, and so that took a toll as well because mm-hmm. we were actually in the shop working, and we both weren't feeling well. We like we were eating some pickle dill pickle chips. I will never forget. <laughs> and we were sitting there eating. I'm like, Jazz, these these pickles. Uh, they deal pickles. they don't taste good no more oh, you taste. Like, yes and i was like i can't yes. even taste anything and if you know anything about us we love dill pickle, yes, pickle vinegar, anything. 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 vinegar anything vinegar. and so just like i know this is a nasty <laughs> i can't taste it we went home again we stayed together at the time and we went home and then i was uh cleaning with bleach and i'm like jess what's going on <laughs> like i don't smell the bleach smell and so bit. that was all in the same day i said jess i think we got COVID. <laughs> and mind you, later that night, that's when we felt it. Mm. We it's like the world just changed. And at that time, all you seen was people dying yes. and you know, not surviving. Mm. And so we were like, Oh my gosh, Jesus. We're gonna have to really close the business. Yes, we had real. to close down we for had two to close weeks. Down for real. Oh, okay. Yes. So we you did end down. up having to close. We did. How long were you closed? Though? Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two not weeks. Bad. No, it was because soon well, as we felt better and got that negative uh, COVID oh, test yes. result, yeah, <laughs> 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 is, once and our let me tell you, our customers are so loyal. Yes, they're throughout. Are you guys okay? Do you need anything? Oh. You know, when are you going to be back open? I will wear my mask. I'm like, well, we have to wait until we get up the negative positive, you know, negative results. But you know, it prays to have a good relationship. You know, that great customer service. Um, you know, building that bond with people, that's really important. People don't understand that. They have gotten us through everything. Yes. And COVID was just one of those disasters that happened that really um, changed just everything about business, the way yes. you do business, um, your thought process. Um, going to. back to some of those techniques you learned in school, you have to pull some of those out. Okay, Ebony, let's rebrand. We need to pull out another marketing print. Mm. We need to re-strategize. What does that look like for Sassy Sister? What if this happens again? What are we going to do? Yep. So we had to, we re-strategize every year. Every year we oh, sit okay. down and we do a forecast of what's going on and what we need to do for the prior year. So that kind of changed a lot for us. So it, it made us kind of um, be look, a little bit yep. more firm in sticking to our plans. And creating systems. Yes, systems. Um, and I think 2020 was one of the years, too, of really us pushing ads. That's why mm-hmm. I say digital marketing, the mm-hmm. rebirth. Um, yes. And so that helped us stay out there, too. And then something I also want to know, my our other sister, Vaughn, she um, is also – one of the sassy She's sisters. Sister. Shout out um, to Sister Vaughn. Yes, we love her. <laughs> and um, honestly, she 
she helped push our business she too. She really did. She was then in Sarasota back home. Okay. And so she had also started Sassy Sisters Extreme Collection mm-hmm. because Vaughn was big on the colors, colors and, and extreme things mm-hmm. um, of the wig side. And so she helped push our business too when it came to marketing, sharing our posts, posting her wigs. So it draw a lot of attention so we were also able to ship out wigs during COVID it was a whole thing wow so, so you never closed really you didn't you had to close the building yes but the business never stopped thriving never stopped. we were hustling yes so I want to my husband and I talk about this often the digital age AI is changing everything everything and I'm always looking for industries that a computer can't touch uh, a robot can't do and to me I believe hair is one of them yes um would you or do you believe that the hair industry is something young people should look into going into if they don't want to do a traditional route of college? Because a computer can't braid, a computer can't make a wig, a computer can't put in sister lock. So what would you tell a young person who doesn't want to take that traditional college route? Can they go into hair care without a college degree? Oh, yes. And and I think it goes back to to utilizing your strengths and your gift because I'm big on your gift will make room for you. And so like I have my mentees, I always tell them all the time and we intern um, most summers. We have interns come um, from either my mentorship program or just young girls that we meet and cross paths. And so we allow them to get a full understanding of how to run a business but also how to make a wig but understand the hair industry is so broad Mm -hmm. you can do so much in without lifting a finger so it just depends on how you want to utilize your talents in the industry but I would definitely even though I got my doctor and all of that stuff that does not hold as much weight as your gift and what Mm -hmm. you are called to do so you can literally go to trade school go to school for six months eight months whatever and you can be very successful because success is what you make it it's not what your dollar tell them that again (laughs) success is what you make it and that's based on what you set for yourself and accomplish for yourself so of course you can be successful in the hair industry (laughs) I had to bring that out because you know there's so many people say every you still need a college degree you're not going to be recognized without that piece of paper and I just don't see the world going that way anymore so I hear you talking about a lot of men Mental programs, you have other businesses. So tell the ladies, what else do you do? Because Sisters Boutique, Sassy Sisters is huge, right? Yes. Yes. But you do more. We do. So actually, I used to work for Corporate America for eight years. So I worked in HR and I also did hair on the side, of course, at the shop. Um, in about almost end of this year, be three years, I stepped out on faith and I decided to pursue Sassy Sisters 100%, which was the best decision. Yes. Um, so I did that. Um, I also, uh, currently I do taxes as well. So, um, you need your taxes done. And she's yes. great. Come contact your girl. <laughs> um, so I do that as well. But my focus was more so to step back and to restructure our business to where we, so in the future, I'm just, we were trying to make it easier. And I felt like by me stepping back from our corporate America jobs, I could look back and I could re-strategize the business, remarket, and um, just get the business more organized. I wanted to give all of that love that I was giving to my last Mm. company. I needed to give that to Sassy. That's right. So these past three years, I just been focused on mostly just that. I do the taxes. Um, I do, you know, I, I sell uh, boil peanuts and different things like that for different events. That's pretty fun because once again, we do it as a family. Yes. So we're Southern. We enjoy eating boil peanuts. Yes. We grew up off those, and everyone it's loves Jazzy one. Boil Peanuts. It's called Jazzy Boil Peanuts. Look it up. We've got a website. Um, no, but I definitely will tag you in all the advertising. Please do. I would. Yes. Um, but yeah, so we do, I do certain events like Juneteenth, um, uh, Easter, King Day, Easter. So I'll do certain events like that, but we do it as a family. Lovely. So it's never just me. It's honestly, you'll see both of my sisters. You'll see our mother. You'll see our niece and nephew sometimes before they ditch us and go with their friends. <laughs> um, you'll see my brother, you know, once in a while he'll come down to, oh, and he does hair too. In Atlanta. Yes. Seriously. Yes. Yes. What's his name? His name Pierre. is Pierre. Shout out Pierre in the show. Woo, we Hi, love brother. you, Pierre. <laughs> yes. But yeah, so, um, 
So pretty much that's what I'm doing right now. I just want to kind of give that love to Sassy Sisters and that I think by me leaving my corporate job, Mm -hmm. it helped Ebony kind of step out and pursue some things that she wanted to do as well because Ebony was actually working at the shop full time. Yes. And she was kind of carrying the weight. I I wouldn't say on her own, but she was doing a little bit more as far as like the business aspect of it. When I was working full time at Corporate America. Okay. So now that I'm back at the shop, Ebony can kind of do the things that she does. Yeah. So it's kind of like ro- roles are reversing mm-hmm. um, because I left my Corporate America job in 2018. So it was, what, three years prior to jazz. So kind of two two years I was at the shop full time working. Now, don't get me wrong. Jazz would be in that back room with her oh, uh working. Her computer in in her breaks and times where she could work, she was there. But so then once she left her full time job, I was able to really step out um, because I always taught. So I'm I'm a teacher. I'm an educator at heart. I love teaching and motivating all of that stuff. So I I was teaching on the side at the time um, eventually. But then I kind of took on. I do so much. Every time somebody asks me, I always get kind of choked up. Look, my students, I'm still learning my elevator pitch. <laughs> the ones I tell them to know. But um, right. because I do so much. She teaches um, at Bethune Cookman, by the way. Yes, I even am though, a professor. Even though you're a rattler? Of course. I, I had to sprinkle a little rattler <laughs> over there. Yeah, I just know. wanted to say yeah. that. <laughs> For the audience. But, yes, so I do uh, teach entrepreneurship and human resources at Bethune Cookman University, mm-hmm. um, which I still love. Love, HBCU love. Yes, HBCU. Um, but aside from that, I have my mentorship program where I mentor young girls between ninth and twelfth t- grade. Um, I also do real estate. Now, as of recently, I've kind of slowed down with the real estate thing um, just because of the market and some things. Great. But I have a very well-rounded background. And what else do I do, Jazz? Um, <laughs> I asked her because she know see. everything. What else do I do? Besides that, what's the name? You of work your... on the podcast. Oh yeah, so I was on um, Plug In Orlando, and I say was because we're restructuring some things, which is amazing podcast. Um, but on the opposite end, I just started with my friend Denisha. Let's talk about it um, because we're well rounded individuals too, and so we have a lot to talk about. I love it. And so we talk about entrepreneurship. We talk about some highs, some lows of what we experience behind the scenes. Um, I and go a little deeper and talk about some personal things that I struggle with to, you know, help motivate me to continue entrepreneurship because it was not easy taking that step. Mm -hmm. And I tell people all the time, like, I save like 15,000 in a year um, to take that leap of faith to leave my corporate job. But Money is not everything. Because when I tell you that 15,000 was gone in five months, Mm -hmm. not six, five. (laughs) And so I, I, it's because I saved the money, but I didn't really have a exit strategy per se. Um, And so that took a toll. So I had to re-strategize, get it together. And that's what birthed Rainy Enterprises, where I work with um, businesses to help them re-strategize, do their business plans, business coaching. So I do a lot, um, but everything that I do, I love. And that's why I've been able to do what I do so long. Because you love what you do. Exactly. Um, Technology. In the wig industry specifically mm-hmm. has it changed does it help in what you do like can you use ai can you use technology <laughs> and like, is that even a question yeah. <laughs> i mean i would know is no, that yes. something yes okay share that ai i have a love hate relationship yes. with that i'll just be honest with you on the good well let me give you the bad thing first so with ai i feel like You know, it's taken away from that personal touch that businesses technically Mm -hmm. always had. Mm -hmm. Not only businesses, but for upcoming students that want to pursue a business degree. I feel like with AI, it takes away that critical thinking portion Mm -hmm. where you can't sit back and and organize what you need to do. AI can kind of tell you what to do. But there are things in business that... They don't teach you. You have to just find out yourself. That hands-on experience. And there's yeah, experiences. And I just feel like AI in that sense, I'm not a big fan of. 
Now, as far as like marketing and advertisement, AI is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Um, You can, like I said earlier about the marketing plan, you can type in, you know, how to uh, create a marketing plan and AI help you do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Even with, um, you know, technology, you know, we first started, we didn't have like a register. We didn't have. (laughs) You didn't have a register? (laughs) We didn't have a register. So all of our transactions were, um, you know, we well, we did have PayPal. Okay. So we did have PayPal. Um, we had PayPal and Square. And Square. So I guess I we, did, Square. we did have those, but in the store. Um, we had this little box. <laughs> we had a box. With our cash and change. Yes. And then we had like PayPal the and Square. lemonade stand. Oh, yes, a little yes. cash box. Yes. But that didn't last long because, it didn't last long. <laughs> you know, with... Yeah. Our minds coming together, we and I'm like, Jazz, no, we need a we better need a system. system. So, so we eventually is beautiful in that sense. yes, because we got merchant service, mm-hmm. and okay, great. But then we needed a better way to track all of our transactions. Yes. So yes. we stopped the cash apps, the this, the that, you know, all those things on the outside, right. and brought it into one. So now we have a system that tracks we everything, have a great system. Um, and we rarely ever use outside. Um, pay structures except on our e-commerce side Mm -hmm. e-commerce you know you have different options for online purchasing but as far as in the shop we have one system and we always tell people this is cash or card we got to use the system because some of our old old clients they're like oh i can send it on cash app can i just give you no, uh-uh, we not, not anymore. Can you just put in my card no we got to mm-hmm. swipe your card mm-hmm. and technology has you know improved dramatically and um, I mean, the more money you make, the more you can invest mm-hmm. in some of those technologies that can make it more um, convenient for your customers as well as us. Um, I mean, QuickBooks is another one. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a blessing to track everything you do. Yeah, your um, mileage. Your mileage, <laughs> everything. Look, yes. for taxes, do it. Um, yes. So, yeah, technology is beautiful right now. It is. It is. Beautiful. I love AI um, and I hate it as well. Um, I, I feel like is taking over too much of humanity. Yes. And that's what bothers me. Um, with AI again, because I'm talking specifically about hair. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe you don't know because you have a manufacturer now. You've mm-hmm. gone that far. Do they use technology to make wigs or is someone still hand sewing them? And it's both. It's both. Okay. It's both. It's so they do use the technology, um, but they do have, uh, they do use hand they use their hands too okay. as well so it's yeah both. it's only so much i feel when you're making something from scratch it's only so much you can do with the machine of course you can run it through the machine make it quick but somebody has to grab that and move it until they get technology to where the yeah. point where it's literally making the wig without a person then it will make a difference okay. but I, I can say this too because I remember like three years ago, one of our clients at the time, she said, what are you going to do when people stop wearing wigs? And I, I said, that's like wigs. saying, what a vegan saying, what are you going to do when everybody stop eating meat? <laughs> it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. So we're just, we evolve with the trends and the opportunities that presents us. So we make, like Jasmine said, we go to the drawing board towards the end of the year. We say, okay, this is what's working. This is not what's working. This is what's um, selling. You know, this is what the girlies are doing right now. So we keep up with the trends and we, you know, change as we need to. But we also have a clientele to meet. So a lot of our clientele, um, they may not wear the long 40 inches. You know, these are a lot of our clientele is working women. And so, you know, they want to be presentable. Exactly. So this has been really good because I'm learning a lot about the hair industry, even though I know a lot of ladies in hair. What you do, as I said, is very interesting. It's unique. Um, when it comes to entrepreneurship, t- share with us a time that you were like, I'm done. i or has there ever been it, your team? So I don't know. When you're like, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm over it. Share with, <laughs> share with I'll us the time faces. that happened. Or did it ever happen? I don't think I ever had a I'm done moment when it came to entrepreneurship. Mm. I'm going to knock on wood and air and everything else. But I don't believe I had a I, I'm done moment. But I did have a, we always have a, 
we need to figure this out moment. We need a break. We need to, you know, we need to figure this out. We need to, okay, let's step back. Let's sit down. Let's think. And thank God for our sister Vaughn too, because she's big on kind of open our eyes. She, she opened our eyes to things that we haven't seen. She's very creative. She's very like on a different spectrum. Yeah. She's like, well, have y'all thought about this or maybe we need to do that? Or I think we should do this or this isn't working. So we kind of have that. You know, what do you call it? Not third eye. I guess third eye. No, third eye. Third eye. eye. So we have that um, where when we're at that, I can't call it a I'm done moment, but we're like, okay, we need to think about this. Let's sit back. Let's figure it out. Like this wig is not selling. Yeah, this not working. What do we need to do? We need Mm -hmm. to change this. And we're more so quick to move. Yes. So we don't ponder on it forever. We're more so like, okay, well, we need to make a decision. So we're always at that that point to where we're like, okay, we need to restructure. Let's that's our big thing in the shop. So me personally, I never been at that. I'm done. And I think that's the benefit too of having a partnership, mm-hmm. um, because you can rely on someone to pick you up when you have a moment. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I I'm 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 always gonna be an entrepreneur in some form or fashion. Mm-hmm. So I never had that thought of like I'm done. However, because I was doing so much at one time, that's why I always tell people now, don't do so many things at one time. Um, like I was doing real estate, I was teaching, I was you know, doing this. Mm-hmm. And one thing about me, I'm going to give my all. No industry that I'm in, you're never going to see me not give my all. Mm-hmm. You, like, you're not going to experience that if I'm working with you in real estate. Gotcha. You know, like, how you do it? I'm going crazy behind the closed doors. <laughs> closed <laughs> right, doors. right. <laughs> but <laughs> turn around. <laughs> what helped me too, I'm going to say, like, truly my husband, because he's the totally opposite for me. He's 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 not a workaholic. He's gonna drop. If I call him right now, he's gonna drop everything and he's gonna get here the best way he can. That's right. So he helped me to understand that balance of work life balance, mm-hmm. and so he contributed heavily. But I also helped him too. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Shout out, hubby! Shout out, hubby! Yes, my husband Antonio Haynes, <laughs> which I love dearly. Um, so yeah, he's definitely helped me understand work life balance because we both compliment each other where he may not have um the entrepreneur mindset but now that he's been around me for so long he's like oh i want my own business What's i want to do this mm-hmm. and then vice versa i'm like oh i need to take a little break focus on self-care sometimes um so yeah that's important good um i i i wonder if the two of you will ever what's the word uh leave each other i think the two of you're gonna be in business like forever for- me personally i feel like it's gonna be a forever thing just because like my sisters they're my best friends yep we do everything together we cook out together we go to the beach together we um plan things together um we talk every, we talk every day, day. Even- and we've been doing this since we left for college college like every morning i'm speaking to one of them either ebony or vaughn i'm calling them hey what y'all doing like we didn't just like see each other the night before <laughs> or even after work i'm like well what are you doing after work like so we have that relationship but once again it stemmed from my mom yep. so i feel like whatever we do in life even if it's not it but it's Ebony has her ministry. You know, she has things that she enjoys to do, and I don't. Ebony will tell you. Mm-mm. And they what do you mean by Ebony. that? Like, for example, if I'm there's... always doing something. For example, Ebony, <laughs> Ebony is an educator. Ebony enjoys, you know, um, she enjoys teaching, like, in school. For me, I don't want to be a teacher in school. That's not my ministry. Well, as of yet, you know, that's not my ministry. It's not something that I have a passion about. So I feel like in that sense... We don't, we don't, we're not doing that together. You know, she's doing that on her, by herself. But however, I just feel like throughout life, we're always going to do something together. And support each and other. And support each other. Because we're very supportive. Doesn't matter Obvious. if she wants to jump off a bridge tomorrow. I'm going to ask her, okay, well, do you have um something attached to yourself? Like, what? I'm, I'm coming with you. Like, we going we gonna to do it together. Like, I something. need you to still be alive when you get <laughs> on that bridge. So, how we, so we going to figure out how we going to do it together. Like, we're, we have that type of bond, that type of relationship where we just support each other. So... Yeah. What's important for people to know who are not related um, coming into business? What's important for them to know to keep the processes going, to strategize together? What's important to know as business partners? 
Because it's different when you're married. Me and my husband, yes. of course, it's easy. Your sisters. What if you don't know each other? What would you leave with people? Honestly, it's not as easy. Um, just logically thinking when we hear other people say, I could never work with my sister. I could never work with my brother. Like it's not as easy for a lot of people, but you again have to go in it with the right intention. And you got to understand it's a team effort. Mm -hmm. Everything is a team. Nobody is here or there. You know, it's a team. You have to compliment each other. Say that one more time. That it's a, it's, it's a what? A it's a team. team. There's, oh. there's no, no I, I in, in team. At all. Okay. <laughs> and so you have to work together and you have to pay attention to each other's strength and weaknesses, weaknesses. who who's That's better at this who's better at this and how can we come together mm -hmm. to make it work based on our vision and a mission of the business and so if someone always wants to lead lead and control it's not going to work mm -hmm. like even me I'm naturally um I can be a little controlling freak sometimes mm -hmm. um but in business it's no longer like that because we have we understand each other's strengths and weaknesses and I understand not to cut you off Ebony but I no, understand that if Ebony is good at something I'm not gonna try and trump what she's doing Same you understand here. I'm gonna let her do it and believe it or not I love it because it's just oh I, I get focused on something mm -hmm. else oh, thank God it works and, <laughs> and it works and it's vice versa but we do have to know about everything since we are the owners and we do run the business together. So it may be something that I do all the time. Ebony may not do it, but she knows about it. Mm, and important. she knows as far as like what I'm doing, how I'm, I still have to explain it to her. So God forbid anything happens. She under, she can kind of take lead or whatever, like doesn't matter. You know, if whatever happens, she needs to be able to follow my lead and to be able to complete whatever the task. Yep. So both people need to know the business from the bottom up and yes. then whomever is the best in any section, that's who leads. Exactly. So it's important mm -hmm. to know both people should mm -hmm. know exactly what you're doing. And I'm saying that because we had another partner mm -hmm. and, um, they didn't know anything, and when we tried to teach them, they didn't want to learn. They wanted one part of this business, and you can't just know one no. part of this business. So it's very important for everyone to know what we're Absolutely. doing. Absolutely. Um, what's next for, I'm not going to say the, the boutique yet. I want to individually. What's next for you, Jasmine, in entrepreneurship? Ooh. Entrepreneurship. What's next for me? Ah, Honestly... I'm not going to say I don't know, but I am going to say um, I will be doing more, thing with, more things with tax season next year. Okay. So I'm actually just trying to restructure some things now. I have some fun things planned. So I will be um, implementing a little bit more, just trying to um, maybe work with different systems, um, maybe creating a team in the future. Uh, so as far as that aspect, I do see that changing. Um, in the future, uh, I would say that for now, that for okay. now, that's, that's plenty. Mm -hmm. You have a, you have a vision, you have a plan. What's next for you in entrepreneurship? So honestly, one thing I've learned, I always say, I'm going to master, like once you start to get yourself in so many different industries, you have to take a step back and master. So that's what I've been doing the last two years is mastering everything that I've place my hands into so education again is always um, a passion of mine so I will still be teaching at Bethune Cookman but full-time now um, I was part-time but it still works with my schedule it, does. it still it works does. thank mm -hmm. God that's why I say God is good yes he is God has a way of using the things that you are passionate about to make it work um and then also now pushing more of my nonprofit, um which i did not speak on earlier um it's called hope to home and so i'll be doing more things in the community and i've restructured restructure my nonprofit, have a new board um that i'll be releasing in the next couple months and so we'll be doing more things um, with our girls but also incorporating a little of some of the young men okay. um so i'm excited about that and um also just focus on building my my relationship with my husband and doing more things to create memories what you saying building what happened you just got married oh well november be two years and Nobody we are was. not getting any younger <laughs> so you know whatever god placed in our life we'll be more than happy to receive amen. So, amen. yes so what's next for sassy sisters boutique 
expansion growth and when I say that I mean in a sense of we are we have been working since we were 12 and 13 it's hair and so we are in a place where we're working smarter and not harder make it easier yes Mm -hmm. so um you know we have some things that we have plans for sweets things like that um we are firm believers um, we don't speak on too many things until they come into fruition. So, you know, we have to be mindful of that because you can't let Everybody too many know spirits know what's going on mm-hmm. in the background. But um, we are expanding and growing um, and being more strategic with how we um, grow and expand our business. Because as we all know, the hair industry, it beauty changes. industry in general changes and it's booming. It's a billion dollar industry. Um, so you have to keep up with the trends and just make sure that, you, you know, pave the way for the women to the come. The women coming That's up, right. passing um, it forward. Absolutely. Yeah. So shout out a couple of women in business that you would like to highlight here on the podcast as I ask every woman that come on, and there's two of you today. So yes, shout out a couple of women you would like to highlight on this podcast and why in business, the entrepreneurs. So I would start off highlighting because Vaughn couldn't be here today. Our sister Vaughn, um, highlight her because she's amazing. She's a great creative, um, and she I'm so proud of her growth and how she's stepping out into what she wants to do um, outside of Sassy Sisters. Um, she's a behavior tech, too. She loves kids as far as helping them in their um, issues and things that they struggle with behaviorally. Um, and so – I love that for her, and I'm always going to support her. We're always going to support her. Um, should I keep going? Because I got a whole bunch of women. Yep. Okay. Some women <laughs> in business. Yeah. Well, I just want to say give a shout out to Kiosha. Because yes. she actually, I think she brought you to yes, us. Yes, she did. Um, and she's a great support system. We support each other. She's She sends women to us. We send women to her as well. Um, and she's even with my other business, my boiled peanut business. She's also been supportive with that, too. She's so, supportive with yeah, everything. She Kiosha, yeah. She'll tell you. She's one of our sassy sisters, too. She be like, too. hey, sister. She's <laughs> like, I'm a sassy sister, too. <laughs> That's and right. many, if you haven't <laughs> seen the podcast with her, please take a look. She's amazing. She's she funny. Is. She's, She's very down funny. to earth. She She's just an awesome That's person. That's who she is, too, all Naturally, the time. Yes. All the time. All the time, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I just wanted to shout out her. <laughs> yeah, she was on the list, too. Mm-hmm. So, um, But also, my friend Stacia, she's been a pivotal person person in our transition um she was our photographer um when we first what's the name of her business stacia mm-hmm. stacia jones studio she's, she's a awesome. photographer yes, she um is. she used to take our uh, pictures in college uh, for our clothing boutique and then she, she sure also did. so she she's awesome she does them now for our business as well yep i'll be calling you yes yeah, stacia um denisha she has a, a cleaning business she's also a realtor she's i love cleaning. awesome i want denisha on here right? we can yes. talk for hours about cleaning <laughs> no seriously she's awesome um who else i mean our mother I was just she gonna say her. she has a non-profit why are you just well. gonna cut me off <laughs> Come on, i'm sorry our mother Look, i was trying to give her Look, hold on now. She wanna she wanna <laughs> stick it in there before I say yes. it. But our mother, um, she has she does many things too. She's always been an entrepreneur. She has a nonprofit Judah Foundation. She also um sell like purses and um her apparel um business. So she does a lot. And I told you I can keep going because I know so many we women good. in business. We we'll um, give a shout out to Brandy. Yes, so Brandy. Brandy, she um well she she hasn't did anything currently for us, but when we first started Sassy Sisters and doing that process, she was helping with like the marketing portion, like creating our websites, um, editing our pictures. Um, she was a big help. She, she was, was a big help. Yeah, Brandy was awesome. So shout out to her. And she she, did, she still do like some things personally mm-hmm. for us. Yeah, personal things um, she does. that she does. And then also I wanna shout out um, why well, I can't think all of a sudden, you know what? We just going to we'll leave it back. right there. But mm-hmm. women, y'all know we love y'all. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we just grateful for those relationships and partnerships that we oh, have. Oh, shout out to Ramsey. She said women. Oh, got to be women. Because <laughs> yeah, I was women. like, that's, uh-huh. that's why I stopped because I was actually about to say him. Too, so he like, do. <laughs> he we did. love you, Ramsey, but yes. you can't come on my show. I <laughs> know. I'm sorry, but I... That's why I stopped because I was, like, I was about to just say Rams and I'm like he's not a woman. Well, um, but yeah. Well, there's for the record, if he has a business, we would love to have him on that podcast. Um, yes. Before we go, always 
Start with you, Ebony. Tell these young ladies, old ladies, matured ladies, wherever they go by, what does it take to be successful? Because I know you said it's not money. Mm -hmm. So your personal opinion, experience, what does it take to be successful? Uh, It takes um, being goal-oriented and um, having a plan. So if whatever you set for yourself, that is what's going to succeed. And so when I say that, even for a single parent, if she wants to be the best mom that she can be and she wants to make sure that her child has everything that she needs, um, say for she has a lemonade stand or something, she, she set those goals to accomplish and she succeed at that. You're successful so I, I feel it can success, success can be anything that you put your mind to and you accomplish. So as long as you have a plan and you're consistent or you, you have the ambition and drive to succeed at it, you're successful. Whether you're in corporate America, whether you have your own business, or you're still figuring it out. But if you're accomplishing those goals, you're successful. Love it. Love it. Jasmine, what would you tell young ladies, people, if they feel that they don't have what it takes, what if they didn't come from a family with such love, such support, what would you tell them? I would tell them to create their own lane. What I mean by that is don't focus on what success looks like for someone else. Focus on what success looks like for you. So your path is going to be different. You know, take baby steps. Don't try to just do everything at once. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I said before, you know, always find your partner. But if, like, you want to do it by yourself, of course, you know, outline it. Make it make sense. Um, Slow down. It's okay to go at your own pace. You know, um, you're not going to have it all the same day. And once again, it doesn't matter what someone else is doing. Focus on what you're doing. Take it step by step, write it down, organize it, um, save a little bit of money. You don't need a whole bunch of money to do business. Get little things here, little things there. Say that one more time. You don't need what? You don't need a whole bunch of money to do business. Yes. You don't. We started our business with what we had, $600? What was it? The the, the hair that we the first hair? ordered. What oh, was, my God. I know it was less. It? Yeah, it was less it was than like $800. Yeah, it was, it was less. Yeah, it was less than that. And we bought like hair. Me. And, again, we made wigs. Mm-hmm. So, it and then just to piggyback off of what Jess said, if you're someone by yourself and you're trying to figure it out or go into business, also be open to collaborating. Even mm-hmm. if you're not partnering with someone mm-hmm. in business, you can collaborate. Work smarter, not harder. You know, you can fulfill your passions and your vision by collaborating, too, because you can't do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. At some point, you're going to need someone. You're going to need a team. You're going to need you got to open up your mind to say, you know what? I can't do this by myself, but, you know, I can use your expertise maybe to to run my books or whatever. You know, be open minded. Yeah. And another thing I would say, um, it's unfortunate, but be open to failure. Because failure Mm. is not the end. Mm. It is not the end. Failure, honestly, to me, is just a way where I need to step back and I need to restructure. I Mm -hmm. need to rethink. I need to, you know, figure out. It's okay to understand what's going wrong so you can change that to make it go right. Yes. Um, So you need to be open to that in business. Believe me, you will fail a hundred times before you actually Succeed become once. successful. <laughs> and once again, success looks differently for everyone. Yes. So you can't look at what someone else looked like. And that goes to, goes for you guys too in your podcast. You can look at someone else's podcast and they have a hundred million views and all that in the third. But what you guys got, it works for you and it's something special. You understand? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yes. So what people need to realize is that what you start out with may not be what you end with. You just have to be consistent in the process. Yes. And um, what I was saying as far as like us, you know, like we started out with having a couple couple hundred dollars we had to spend on our business. We have made six figures, you know, and, and that was in the, the course of a couple years. So mm-hmm. it wasn't something like overnight. Right. So we had to step out of faith on faith and make it happen. So I would say, honestly, just. Don't use your 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 um your struggles as a stopping block. You know, yes. just keep going. 
That's what oh, I would keep say. going, even blind. You yep. may not even know what next day mm-hmm. um, has to offer, but you know what you have now and keep working it, working it till it works for you. Work it till it works for you. I love yes. it. So that was a lot of juicy gems for everyone. I, I really appreciate it. Any questions for me? I would love to ask you mm-hmm. what. I mean, when you you said you trans you you and your husband transitioned um, for working for someone for thirteen years, how did you transition mentally? Like, how do you prepare yourself to go and like you know what? I'm going to take this leap of faith. Faith in here I am. Great question. God was in it. Number one, yes. it was so many signs. Mm-hmm. Um, but what really did it is my husband has had a camera in his hand since he was nine, 10 years old. <laughs> and when I met him, he had more cameras in his hand. And I believe when he said, I can't do this no more where we were. And I asked him, what do you mean by like, I, I, this is what you love. He's like, I can't create. I'm not being creative. Mm-hmm. He wasn't able to be himself in the videos and his productions. And so we sat and we had to talk and it didn't happen. This took a two year planning process Mm -hmm. um we had to okay how much money do we need we're going to need a house we're 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 leaving the state of georgia because we were in georgia at the time um it it was we had a plan and it was um i'm not going to say scary it was challenging because we came from an environment where pretty much we made six figures every year and Mm -hmm. we didn't have to worry about mortgage or anything like that so when if it's all about money, mm-hmm. um, you will get stuck. Mm-hmm. But when we realize it's about our passion, and to see my husband smile and say, "I'm ready, honey. This I want to do it for myself," and that he wasn't afraid, that's what made me be okay with saying, "Yes, let's take the leap." I always trust him. I know he's gonna do what's best for both of us. Exactly. So when I knew that it's time for him to live his passion, let's go now. I didn't say yay right off the bat because you know as women <laughs> we're course. like wait a minute Hold what's the plan now. make it make sense <laughs> yeah <now>. what's <laughs> the plan but well, as we worked on that for two years it happened and God said now is the time and we left and here we are so that's it's been awesome. a blessing that's awesome and we love you all studio thank you, you. We love thank the you. setup it's really nice thank you and guess who set it up you no i have no design my husband really? did it yes awesome. he's really good I mean, at design he's the cameraman yeah. Yeah. He, knows he knows how he wanted to look yeah yes. he's that a makes set sense. designer too That's so awesome. yeah That's i did want to ask you a question mm-hmm. um what was your goal when you created this podcast because i know um your husband he always had the camera in his hand but you're the spokesperson mm-hmm. so my question is for you when you guys sat down and was like okay what are we going to name this podcast you know it's you know what what is your what was your goal my goal personally um let me not get emotional it's okay look this is your this is your sister girl right here. <clears throat> yeah i'm emotional too so i can relate <laughs> I didn't come from a very supportive Mm -hmm. system Mm -hmm. at all. Um, But the women God did put in my life always cheered me on. Mm. And when I had an opportunity to finally give back in a way that I can, this is how I can. This is how I can say thank you. This is how I can say to other women like you, hey, how can I help? Just come on the podcast, you know, share it. I want to give to women what I didn't have, but what God allowed me to experience. Mm. So that's my purpose of the boss ladies. And I said the boss ladies, because if you're making a boss move, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. And uh, all of us, well, I won't say all of us, a lot of us are boss because we handle our business. Like you said, it doesn't matter um, what someone else's success looks like. What does your success looks like? And it's something that's always been in me. And honestly, it was my husband that said, now it's your turn. Mm-hmm. Um, that's awesome. Because every place I've worked, um, even if I was going to a church, I'm always, women are coming to me. Women are mm-hmm. spilling their lives out mm-hmm. to me. And I don't even know you. And I've always had that in me. Mm-hmm. So 
that's why I'm doing the Boss Ladies Podcast. And it's a cancer uh-huh. thing, too, because, you know, that's my we cancer sister. Yes. <laughs> so, you know. That's, that's, right. all, that's so beautiful. <laughs> well, I, I love, love that. that. Thank you, guys. Thank that's you. beautiful. Yes. So. And I look forward to, you know, even seeing the podcast, looking at it more, sharing. Thank and, you. Um, collaborating in maybe some form or oh, fashion. Definitely. Because definitely. we're both our big two on supporting women, women empowerment. Um, and I just love great energy. Mm-hmm. You know, when you get around that, you feel that um, great spirit. Yes. So that's Which awesome. Which both of you have. Thank Yours you. is very calm and relaxing. It is. And, you know, this is actually our personalities. <laughs> at the gym. I'm more calm and relaxed. Ebony is more. Outspoken. Uh, uh, actually, I'm a balance of both. Yeah, she is a balance of both. Because there, there are times <laughs> where, like, they send all the customers to me. Mm-hmm. That are um a little challenging. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The ones that are um because at the end of the day we have our personalities mm-hmm. and some clients fit well with Jasmine mm-hmm. and some you know do well with me mm-hmm. and vice versa with Vaughn mm-hmm. and so we have that's the good thing about partnership. This is, this is my personality. <laughs> Anyone that may, you know you may meet that knows me and the, they'll be like, Jasmine, I never seen you mad before. Mm-hmm. I never seen you, and you always have a nice just. They think she's so innocent. Yeah, they do. And oh, I you say said think. Thick. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. They do. Let us they let really us put do. emphasis on that. They do. It's because this is this is who I am. But you need that balance because yeah. Ebony, if she's all, if she's anxious, if she's very anxious, anxious, and she's excited. always like, oh, Jazz, you know, this don't look right or whatever. I'm like, oh, Ebony, it's okay. You know, this, I'm, that's my personality. Oh, we'll figure it out. Okay, well, let's just do this. Well, I don't know. She's, she's so more you're the s- optimist. You're the pessimist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why I say I'm a good balance because she's I'm good, also optimistic too. But I'm really like this all the time. Love but it. she's mellow. She's I'm, um. I'm a free spirit. Yes, um, and she hate when I say this word, and I don't know why. But she can be nonchalant too, and nonchalant is not always so negative. Oh no, not at all. It's more so mm-hmm. she don't let anything bother her. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot. I just lot. don't worry. That's what it she is. Don't. I really do faith. not worry. That's I, peace. I, I yes. live my life like a like a bird. I just be <laughs> my my brother in law always say, um, he's always like, Jazz, you always like la 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 oh la la Yes. <laughs> yes. You know why I'm laughing? Y'all see Dwayne laughing? Because uh-huh. that's what he Really? <laughs> that's what he so always says for about you? me. Oh, You're always like da 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 Yeah, that's like la 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 la. I'm like, if Ebony come to me with the idea, she's like, Jazz, you think I think we should do this? And I'm like, mm. Okay, okay, well, let's do it. You know, well, she always down for the call. I am. But when she come to me with certain things, I'm like, what, well, Jazz? Do you think Ebony it's time? Or I'm very analytical, yeah, very strategic. So, well, like, Jazz, what did you, you think about? I'm like, oh, maybe I didn't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's revisit. Well, that's my I husband, <laughs> and that's why we balance yeah. each that's other. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Just like the two of you. Yes. Wonderful. We could sit here all day we and talk. We could. But I know you got to get back to the shop. Yes. There's some beautiful ladies waiting on you. And I want to mm-hmm. say thank you so much for gracing the podcast today taking out time to sit and share your story and your journey with me and i know you helped so many ladies today and i look forward to seeing you again thank awesome. you thank you for it having was a us pleasure being yes. on here as well. i enjoy myself yes, yes. Thank, thank you and as always ladies we can do whatever we want as long as we keep moving i'll see you next time later no time we're chasing dreams creating legacies Boss Ladies Podcast, where we speak our truth.